When the news of the coronavirus was first spreading around, there was this internet mentality of, why does this matter? Why are people freaking out about this? If this isn't a big deal, stop freaking out. And there were these infographics and memes that were going around that were comparing the coronavirus outbreak with the flu. And I found it particularly frustrating to see other people on my feed that were studying science and involved in science backgrounds posting their statuses comparing coronavirus's outbreak to the flu and stating that people need to stop their concerns and just stop talking about coronavirus because it's not a big deal. The flu kills so many more people and nobody seems to care about the flu because it involves such a lack of understanding the differences between the flu, which is an endemic disease that permanently is here to stay and constantly infecting humans, something that we've had exposure to for all of our lives, and something that we already have antivirals for. We have the ability to kind of treat that. We have a healthcare system that is prepared to deal with that. It's something that has been around. It does kill millions of people, and it is persistent as, again, an endemic disease. And coronavirus is a newly emerging disease that we don't know that much about. What we have observed is that it does have a death rate that does appear to be significantly higher than the flu. Uh, that death rate is still fluctuating, understandably so. People have made the argument that due to underreportings of cases, we may not know the exact number. And that is true, that rate is subject to change as we get more information. And the coronavirus has been observed as having an extraordinarily high infection rate. It is spreading from person to person very rapidly and very successfully, especially compared to the genetically related SARS outbreak that happened in 2003 that had an extraordinarily high death rate, but also a pretty low infection rate. And when you are making those observations about a new virus that is going around very rapidly, and it is killing people, the number one goal, naturally, of the World Health Organization is going to start with containment. Can we stop this epidemic that was breaking out in China from becoming a pandemic, something that's going to spread globally? And that is rational. The number one goal here is to not let this epidemic in China become a pandemic, and then subsequently to not let the pandemic across the globe become endemic, some global disease that is here to stay and we can't really do that much about. Kind of like the flu. In other words, while all these people are comparing coronavirus as this thing that's not as serious as the flu, the scientists of the world are saying, hey, we don't want this to become a new version of the flu, some kind of disease that is just persistent in society, sticks around, and floods our healthcare system with all of these new patients that have these diseases that we are not prepared to deal with. This comparison of coronavirus and flu was also perpetuated by our dear leader, Donald Trump, when he tweeted the following. So last year, 37,000 Americans died from common flu. It averages between 27,000 and 70,000 per year in the United States of America. Nothing is shut down, life and the economy go on. At this moment, there are only 546 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 22 deaths. Think about that. Again, coronavirus is new. It's not endemic yet. It's something that does have a low amount of deaths and a low amount of cases reported, as it is actively spreading. And the goal of scientists is to take advantage of that and say, hey, before this becomes a really huge problem, let's recommend some good practices to try and slow the progression of the disease. Well, you've got government interventions and institutional interventions like colleges and universities that are putting forth recommendations and new protocols and procedures for limiting the amount of travel that is happening and also sometimes canceling public events where large amounts of people would all gather in relatively small spaces. Again, kind of a common sense and safe practice if you are trying to limit the spread of a disease. It's not something that I would describe necessarily as an overreaction.
Now, the big reason that some people are dissatisfied with this is because if you start limiting travel and if you start canceling some really big public events, these are things that can put short-term stressors on things like the stock market and world economies. We do live in a world where people are so profit-focused. They're so profit-focused, also in the short term, that they don't care about the health consequences of letting a disease spread. They don't care about the human lives that might be lost. And they sometimes lack the foresight of how these short-term economic stressors might be worth it in the long run to prevent a new disease from becoming endemic that can create long-term stressors on the economy, like flooding hospitals with a whole new subset of patients that have a disease that our society has not had exposure to before and takes years to coordinate. The argument that in order to protect global and domestic economies, we should actually just let everybody get infected with coronavirus and let it run its course and then just deal with whoever is unlucky enough to succumb to that virus and pass away, was actually made by CNBC commentator Rick Santelli. Think about how the world would be if you tried to quarantine everybody because of the generic type flu. Now, I'm not saying this is the generic type flu, but maybe we'd be just better off if we gave it to everybody and then in a month it would be over because the mortality rate of this probably isn't going to be any different if we did it that way than the long-term picture. But the difference is we're re wreaking havoc on global... Now look. I am not suggesting that we go the opposite direction and start having mass panic and hysteria over coronavirus. This is absolutely not an apocalyptic event. We don't need to be burning villages or looting stores. But it is rational and logical to take this threat seriously. And so to have the leader of our nation constantly, again and again, undermining the severity of the situation and saying, people are fine, this virus, people get it, but they totally get over it, people are still going to work. No, you should not be going to work if you have it. It is true that if you are somebody who exists and you are not a senior citizen, you are probably not going to die because of coronavirus. Great, but you are still a body. You are still a transmission vector. You are still passing the virus from person to person and helping it spread throughout the nation. And when a virus does become endemic and it's here to stay and it is continuously being transmitted from person to person year after year and it's not going away, that virus is subject to evolution. It's subject to genetic changes as it continuously replicates and spreads throughout the nation, throughout the globe. And it's entirely possible that a more deadly strain might arise somewhere down the road. We do know that a genetically related form caused the SARS outbreak in 2003, which was significantly more deadly. The CDC test for coronavirus worked through polymerase chain reaction, which anybody who's worked in a microbiology lab in science has probably some experience with. PCR is the process by which you can actually amplify a small target region of DNA, even from a tiny sample, and get millions and millions of copies of that DNA that can then be picked up for analysis. The PCR reaction that was developed by the scientists working for the CDC to test for coronavirus actually targeted three different viral genes of the coronavirus. And one of the reagents that was actually being used turned out to be defective which resulted in the tests not working, which resulted in this massive delay of the tests before the CDC was able to modify and come up with a solution, which involved modifying their protocol. Turns out you don't actually need to target all three of those genes to detect coronavirus, and a modified protocol that ignored the use of the defective reagent actually resulted in the tests being able to be administered properly. And further testing delays were caused by some emergency procedures at the Food and Drug Administration. The other lab corporations that can do private testing, like LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics, actually need emergency use authorization in order to develop and use their own tests to test for coronavirus in patients. But realizing the severity of not getting as many people tested as quickly as possible is also contributing to people who are unknowingly carrying the virus, spreading it further and further across the nation. 
The FDA has actually announced that these corporations can actually devise and give out their own tests clinically without being subject to penalty under the emergency use authorization while they are pending their reviews for that. Which means that as of today, you actually can go and get tested for coronavirus through work of labs like Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp. Currently, the amount of deaths that have happened is relatively low. And the goal should be to keep it that way. Not to ignore the problem and say that it's no big deal, nobody's dying, and wait until it spreads enough that we start getting massive amounts of debt. And we start over flooding our hospitals with patients that we don't have the capacity to care for. That's when we create a much bigger problem that we might not be able to handle anymore. But this whole thing about coronavirus is about being proactive and utilizing forethought. It's something that I wish we could do more as a society. But if any of us have learned anything about the way we treat problems that might not exist until the future, like climate change, uh, it seems that we have a tendency to ignore those principles. And that is my take on coronavirus. So thank you guys for watching and stay inquisitive. Bye, you guys.